It's my fear, you really have to see it. Six feet two in a cold pack, no slack. <laughs> 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 She's our kid, too. too. <laughs> I wish I could tell you and brag and say that my family saved this dog from lethal injection from the pound. But no, not my family. We bought our dog at the mall. <laughs> Stupid, right? <laughs> it's all thanks to my friend Nancy. She showed up at my son's preschool with this cute, well-behaved little dog. I told her, Nancy, I wish I could get a dog like that. Well, that night my wishes were granted because I got a text from Nancy. Marie, I found your dog. She's at the Rockaway Mall. <laughs> I couldn't wait to share my, the news with my family. Against my husband's better judgment, the next day we were piling into that van to go check out this dog. After consulting the mall map, we found Pet Parade wedged in between the Orange Julius and Spencer Gifts. <laughs> and there at the front window, under the manager's special sign that was flashing, we saw the cutest little white ball of fur. She was so adorable. My husband said, we need a vote. We need a family vote. <laughs> After three solid yeses, and one hell no. <laughs> that isn't even a dog. How am I supposed to walk that thing? It belongs in a purse. I convinced my husband we had to sleep on it, so we went home without the dog. And the next morning, you would think it was Christmas morning, because those kids came into our room at the crack ass of dawn. Dad, 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 you wake. We gotta go get Cookie. We slept on it. She's waiting for us. <laughs> my husband said, oh my God. He gave the dog a name. <laughs> my husband knew he was completely screwed. <laughs> At the exact moment when the credit card swiped the cash register, we all heard a sound. My husband looked up from his wallet. What was that? It was Hellfire. <laughs> It was Cookie. <laughs> Cookie barked the entire way home. Cookie has been barking for 14 years. <laughs> that dog's bark could break an interrogation or a filibuster in about five minutes. Her bark is so bad. How bad is it? Her bark is so bad that I have to wear earplugs to the vet We've been banned from the waiting room. <laughs> Everybody else sits in the waiting room. All their animals are well behaved, sitting by their masters. My dog comes barreling in like an Alaskan sled dog, levitating. I have to time all her vaccinations for good weather. I googled the lifespan for this dog, and I found out that this dog is going to live well into our retirement. <laughs> I told my husband, and Mike said, that dog is never gonna retire, and I'm never gonna retire, because that dog is like Godzilla on radiation. She just keeps getting stronger. So Mike and I are getting used to the house without the kids, and it's, it's weird, like how many uh, people have kids in the audience? Right? But when you get an empty nest, it, it's hard because you never want your kids to move back home, but you still worry about them, right? Like my daughter just landed her first professional gig as a uh, paralegal for a uh, legal secretary for a criminal dis defense attorney's office. And it has me a little worried about the kind of people she's gonna be. Like who are her dating prospects gonna be? And who's she gonna bring home for dinner? <laughs> Mom, Dad, I'd 
like to introduce you to my new boyfriend. He's a client of the firm. Oh boy, here we go. His name is Ignacio Varga. But the streets call him Nacho. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> yeah, Mom, he's a convicted felon, but it's okay. His parole officer says he's doing great. He promised me that he'll stop trafficking meth across Mexican borders. And you know, I really can't blame my daughter because that tattoo, uh, that teardrop tattoo under his right eye, just screams mysterious. <laughs> oh, good lord. Well, worse yet, she brings home a lawyer. Mom, Dad, I'd like to introduce you to my boss. He, is, he makes a very good living defending all those um, down in their luck uh, prisoners who um, need a second chance, or a third chance, or a fourth chance. Or maybe even a fifth. He, may, <laughs> he pays for everything in cash, and his best friend owns a car detailing shop, guaranteed to get any stain out of any fabric. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to Saul Goodman. Get it, Mom? It's all Goodman. Oh, I get it. But you can call him Jimmy. Oh, I think I've been watching a little too much Netflix. But seriously, guys, like, what is going to happen when my daughter finally comes to her senses and dumps these losers? Because, ladies, we all know that the bad boys eventually lose their luster or go back to prison. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. Hey, Mom, remember Nacho? Yes. Well, he went back to prison. Okay, why? Well, I couldn't work on his defense because of our relationship. It caused a conflict of interest, so he's back in prison. And I had to break up with him because, you know, I'm not going to date some guy in prison. Oh, of course not, Kate. You're not going to date some guy in prison. So he put a hit out on our family. What? <laughs> we got to pack everything up. We got to move to Canada. Oh, God. Do you have your go back, Mom? I don't, I have the purse for cookie. Okay, grab that and uh, take my burner. Call Dad from the car, because we gotta go. Okay, I, I worry about everything. I worry about these things. My husband worries about nothing. <laughs> nothing. He just finds things to do. He went to the tractor supply and he bought this giant plastic owl and he puts it around the house in natural predatory positions over the wood pile, on top of the basketball net, in my car, and he keeps moving it because he says, I gotta move it, I gotta keep it realistic. It's scary. I jump every time I see this thing. I don't understand. We have lived in the woods for 25 years. Now you get the freaking owl? <laughs> he has a new talent. My husband, he burps words. <laughs> he started with your basic art. Then he put a B in front of it, became Bart. Oh, a name. Then I guess Bart needed some brothers, because then I started to hear Bert and Jack. Well, I guess he perfected the names because he moved on to his phrases. Phrases, things like, um... How are you? I'm fine. Good night. I dread the day he burps. I love you. <laughs> and since my son went to college, he, my husband's just been acting weird. The day after we dropped my son off at school, he's walking around the house in his boxers. Only his boxers. All day. It was 12 noon. He's sitting on the couch in his boxers. I said, "Hun, what are you doing? What? I'm relaxing. Okay, but where are your clothes? It's like, I'm hot. Oh, yes you are, baby. I sure think you're running a temperature. We better see if you have a fever. Oh. <laughs> I think the neighbors are confused. Um, didn't they pack that kid up and send him to college? I thought I saw them leaving with their van. Um, he was cleaning up the back room and uh, he was on top of a ladder and he was in his boxers, only his boxers, and he was stringing this string of lights. 
and he informed me that the lights come, they can be programmed with an app, and they can um, be programmed to go against music and a backbeat. So I think the neighbors are confused because they thought we packed up my son and sent him to college, and they're looking out and they're saying, where is that music coming from? What is that pulsing music and that backbeat? And who is that shirtless guy on the ladder? And when is that damn dog gonna stop barking? <laughs> Cookie! That's it, it's, we gotta sell the house. Thank you. <laughs>